Hey again guys and welcome back. I finally have the perfect storm of a couple of hours of spare time and five packages so you know what time it is. It's time for another mailbag. Gonna start with this one. Um, the mailman handed it to me in my hands because it came in this condition. He said, um, yeah, I just wanted to hand you this because in case stuff falls out. So yeah, it was actually torn open in the mail. Uh, development board module times three, January 18th ordered, February 16th arrived, $18.64 for all three items in here. And to everybody's surprise, all the items are still inside. What are the odds? So I'm gonna have to zoom you in for these, but some of you already know what they are. These are ESP32 S3, no, not S3, but the version three or whatever uh, prototyping board. So these are the, th these are super common actually. You see these everywhere, but I checked my hoard when um, I was looking at Dustin Watts' um, uh, free touch deck and I didn't have any of these and these are the specific ones that you need. So yeah, this is a 32-bit microcontroller. Is it 32-bit? Yeah, it must be 32-bit. 32-bit microcontroller. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi, it's got Bluetooth, it's got all sorts of cool stuff. A lot of really cool people, especially the people that were in my podcasts. Uh, if you like podcasts, by the way, you should check that out, Simple Electronics Podcast. But um, yeah, they use these things for everything. And a lot of people argue that these are kind of like the new, you know, go-to microcontroller for people, for well, for makers. Because you can do things, you know, controlled by your phone. You could do things on your network. You can do things um, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Uh, also, you can just use regular the regular pins on them these things are super powerful uh, ESP32 W room 32 by expressive on a dev board with the USB all integrated um, yeah so I'm gonna use one of these for a free touch deck and the other ones are gonna be up for other stuff I am going to learn MicroPython on uh, Sion's uh, tiny Pico that he sent me and I will use these with the knowledge I have garnered from there. Uh, $18 isn't bad, it's just over $5 per board, but that includes the shipping. Um, starting to pay a little bit more for shipping because of, you know, the human malware going around. But it is what it is. These things are super powerful and I can't wait to use them in stuff. So look out for some canned projects for now, like the, uh, the free touch deck. Uh, where Dustin Watts has already done all the hard work for us. Uh, there's a link in the description if you want to see it. But uh, I want to live stream more, so I want to build one of these for myself. And um, yeah, maybe you guys can come along for the journey as well. Let's go on to the next one. Next one up is this one here. Uh, it took nine months to get here. From April 23rd to January 27th. I think I actually got a refund from this, I went to check the seller out so I can send him his money back, but he is no longer registered on eBay. I think this is the one at least. Yes, it is. So these are uh, little syringes of liquid flux. So. RMA223, 10 cc's each, and I've got five of them here, so they were like a dollar each. They're super cheap. They're in these little syringes with the twist, little twist lock uh, tips or whatever. Um, I have these, oh, gotta check my mess here. I've got these pens, which is basically this, but really watered down uh, in a alcohol, and I think they're more alcohol than anything else. So I'm excited to get some actual flux so I can do desoldering a lot easier. Um, yeah, 
I've got uh, five of these. I should be good for a little while. If you don't have any, uh, order some now because you never know when it can take nine months to get here. But yeah, nothing too special. We're going to definitely play with these probably in a live stream or at the next time I need to do some desoldering. I'll have it on hand and we'll be ready to go. On to the next one. Next one up is this one from Amazon, uh, January 27th to January 29th, that prime shipping, $68. Oh wow, almost cut right into it. So this is 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Uh, the story on this, if you're interested, is that when I built my computer, I built it during the first mining craze. Um, where and uh, where there was that um, it was flanked by that flooding in a uh, factory the, the memory factory in uh, you know Taiwan was it uh, and RAM was super expensive so the only RAM I, I could buy was uh, 2400 megahertz super slow stuff uh, I have an Intel system so the RAM speed isn't that important but it's still important um, and RAM lately has been going on sale intermittently. So every once in a while, RAM goes down for a good price. It usually gets snagged right away. Uh, so I finally got in on one of those deals. $68 for 16 gigs is pretty good. It's not as low as it goes, but this is 32 megahertz, 3200 megahertz RAM. So I'm actually going to, what I'm going to do is the next podcast I export, I'm going to export it in my rig as it is with the 2400 megahertz RAM. Then I'm gonna pop in this RAM, 3200, which is not the greatest, but it's faster. And I'm gonna re-export. I'm gonna see which one takes the most time. Um, I'm gonna do this whether or not you guys wanna see it, but if you wanna see it, let me know in the comments because then I'll make it into a video. And this is gonna be done sooner rather than later because generally it's just popping RAM in and out. It's not really a big deal. But if you guys come in for the video, I might just, you know, show you the inside of my computer and uh, give you a rundown on the parts I used, why I used them, and maybe even clean out the inside. So, yeah, let me know if you're interested in that. If you're not interested, I might do it anyways, but it might just be a Patreon-only video. We will see. But, yeah, super simple. These things, um, they're very easy to do. And if you've never replaced RAM, it's one of the, one of the quickest upgrades you can do, really. So yeah, on to the next one. Next one up, we have Toy Car Parts. What does that say? Yeah, Toy Car Parts, and then there's some KS number or something. This was $45.02, January 30th to February 15th. And uh, yeah, I kind of bought this on a whim. Because, uh, yeah, anyways, let me explain once you see it. Okay, so two things here. So the first thing. Oh, wow, this thing is a lot chunkier than I thought. So this is what we call an ESC, an electronic speed controller. Uh, it is used to transfer your sort of throttle input on your controller into turn it into a signal for a brushless DC motor. Some people call them brushless AC motors, whatever. The The signals going in are AC, but uh, yeah, it chops up DC. Um, I can see that the top is glued on here. There's a fan that's supposed to be fully waterproof. It's got fairly chunky. It's got 12 gauge wires on both sides. It's got a power switch on and off. It's supposed to be 100% waterproof. Don't know if that's true. It's got another auxiliary port here. Um, it's got an XT60 connector uh, soldered onto it already, which is how I ordered it. So yeah, these things control um, brushless motors. Now my plan, because I'm getting much better on the CAD software, is to make more RC cars. I think, I don't want to say it out loud, but I do have another project in mind, and my Patreons know that I'm just at the tail end of, an, of a project right now. So, yeah, so you'll see that project very shortly if you're not a patron. If you're a patron, you'll see it a little bit before, uh, but 
there'll be RC projects coming this summer. And so I wanted a nice, big, beefy speed controller. And what's nice is when you're the one who designs the RC car, you can just put Velcro here and just take it out and put it in different vehicles that you've designed, right? Well, this is where this comes in. This is a programming board. So you can, a good quality speed controller, this is a 120 amp constant, like you're, you can do 120 amps constantly on this, so they say. Um, you can control stuff like braking, regenerative braking, acceleration curves, torque curves, speed, direction, all sorts of things in here. They're quite complex. They Some of them have a 32-bit controller in here just to do the math required. Well, this is a programming card for this. You've got all the settings back here. Um, yeah, I'll let you I'll let you see this pretty soon. But what you do is you set the item and the value and then you plug this in and it programs everything and then from model to model you can actually have different settings. So if you build like for example a boat, you need reversing and you need you don't need braking. In a car, you need braking and reversing. In an airplane, you don't need reversing or braking. So you can set this thing up for different models and that's why this program card, I ordered it with it. So together, this was $45. I think this was like $10. I'm also really interested in seeing how it's built, but that's that's another story. Let me get you a zoom in to the features um, that you can program on this card though. Okay, so here are the features. I actually had to take a picture on my phone uh, for me to be able to read it for you. The text is tiny. So the first one is uh, operation model. Uh, I don't really know what that means. Positive rotation, bend, break. Direct positive and negative inversion. Positive belt proportional break. So I think what it is is going one direction and then the brake has a range. Um, positive and negative is reverse and forward. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'll have to check it out. It's a little bit, you know, Chinesium. But um, the rotation direction, number two, the start mode, like how fast it ramps up. Uh, minimum forward strength, the, the forward uh, sort of forward current minimum backing strength, the reverse, so you can actually set a minimum speed to go backwards. Um, maximum backing uh, strength, so the maximum speed in reverse. Some models are very unstable going in reverse. Um, initial braking, maximum braking, braking force, neutral point range, that's where your uh, throttle zeroes out. Uh, brake frequency, so you can actually pulse the brakes at different rates. Uh, lithium saving, so that's shut down when um, you know you when your battery voltage is low, not damage your lithium batteries. Low voltage protection, low voltage threshold, um, reverse maximum throttle stroke, forward uh, maximum throttle stroke, and synchronized rectification. That's probably um, regenerative braking. These are all settings that can be set to different values up on here up until from 1 to 12. So these are all things that can be accessed, like programmed inside of the speed controller here. So this thing should be pretty cool to play with. I think it warrants its own video. We can see what it does. But first I need to set it up on top of a model so it'll probably be in a future video. It's very beefy and I think that lends itself well because if I design an RC car, it's going to have to be big enough so that the resolution of the printer doesn't get in the way. So yeah, that uh, seems to work for me. Uh, let's hope that it's decent. Let's go on to the next one. And the final package is this one here, Screw Fusebox 1212. And this was ordered November 25th, arrived February 2nd, so three months, quite a, quite a while, $23.24. Oh, it's double bagged for my protection, no doubt.
Oh wow, it's in a fancy case. Oh no wait, it's not in a case, it is a case. Okay. Okay, so this is exactly what it says it is. Oh, how do I get this out? I don't want to break it. It cost me a lot of friggin' money. It's okay. First of all, I'm gonna say it's uh, fairly chunky and heavy, which is good. Okay, so you just pull off. So what this thing is is it's literally a fuse box. So what you do is you bring your positive in here and your negative in here, your main negative in here, and then you have all these individual fuses which go out to separate circuits. Now the reason I bought this is because I want to wire up DC power in my shop down here. Um, you guys already know I have a 12 volt power supply powering my LEDs. I am finding that maybe I need a bigger 12 volt power supply like a big beast, a big chonker. And I also want uh, 24 volts to be available everywhere. I am also thinking of building another workbench to make more use of the space. So instead of having stuff on the floor, it'll be up on shelves above another workbench. Plus, I already have the top for it. So, yeah, this guy here is a trial run. I can order some more of these, but the plan is going to be to have a big, massive, 12 volt and probably a big massive 24 volt power supply feeding into uh, ones of these with big fat cables and ring terminals going here and then this is going to split off to other circuits so for example it will be like three workbenches because I have two already so it'll be workbench one two and three uh, LEDs for example like um, video lighting and then workbench one two and three um, for example, uh, mood lighting or just like other kind of lights. And having the fuses right in one box means I can short something anywhere in the shop by accident because it happens and have very little consequences because all it'll do is burn one of the fuse here and I can just replace the fuse. I don't damage my wiring by forcing a ton of current through fairly long wires what it's going to be. So that is the plan to have, you know, 12 volts and 24 volts routed all over the shop here, controlling LEDs, um, all sorts of things. And then even this is just for power and ground distribution. Then I can also do um, other stuff like I can add, let's say, an Arduino here with relays to flip on and off stuff. If I'm sure that nothing is going to short and you know, and potentially cause a fire because it's all fused, all well protected, then that's the better way to do it. These fuses are dirt cheap. I actually ordered this. Um, this is the second time I ordered this. My order got canceled last time. But I had come prepared. I had bought a whole bunch of replacement fuses when they were on sale because I knew I was getting one of these eventually. So there you go, got a bunch of extra fuses for this system. So I am fully ready, but yeah, eventually my whole workshop here, and I might extend it into uh, like a, another room, sort of that way, depending on how things go on YouTube. Um, yeah, I need some way to distribute the power and potentially have my power supplies out of the main room I'm in to keep the noise down. So that being said, if you want to see this, um, you will have to be a Patreon supporter or you'll have to wait an extra long time. My shop infrastructure stuff is stuff I do primarily for Patreon. I do release it to the public, but you know, a month or two afterwards. So if you've seen the 12 volt power supply stuff and adding the, the silencing fan and all sorts of things to it, You've seen that at least a month after my Patreon patrons did. So if you want to be part of the plotting process and uh, if, you know, when I need feedback, for example, uh, a project that I am almost done, I asked for their feedback on what color it should be. 
they gave me color feedback and now the color will be chosen by them. If you want to be part of that, you're going to have to join Patreon. But otherwise, I mean, you can just wait it out. There's no problem. This thing even comes with um, labels. This is kind of made for automotive or boat. So there's, there's labels like accessory, aerator, bilge pump, depth sounder, deck lights, GPS, horn, VHF, autopilot, anchor light. Actually, yeah, I think it's more made for boats. It's pretty much all boat labels on here. But uh, I have a cricket. I can make my own. Here we go. Whip lights, turn signals, chase light, fog lights, interior lights, radar, spare, spotlight, radio, VHF, wipers. So yeah, there's a bunch of these labels. You can put them here going over the fuses. But uh, I probably will make my own labels. Yeah. So, pretty cool thing. Um, very useful, at least in, in my mind. Having fuses and having this mounted on the wall make all the wiring more simple. And when, it's, when I need to diagnose stuff, you know, it'll be right there in front of me. So, yeah. And this terrific treasure trove makes up today's mailbag. If you want to support the channel, the best way to do it is hop on to Patreon. I have a post there explaining where the Patreon dollars are going, where the next investments in the channel um, are planned to be. Uh, the next investment is going to be about $400 Canadian. And so um, I really thank the Patreon supporters that make stuff like that possible. Uh, YouTube is uh, My YouTube, even with the Patreons, is in the negative as far as earning. And that's normal. I expected that. But if you want to, um, you know, help it towards, at least trend it towards the positive, uh, hit up uh, Patreon or buy a t-shirt on Teespring or whatever. Use my affiliate links if you don't want it to cost you any money. Otherwise, the best way to help me is to share the content. Share, share it to your friends. Let everyone know about it. Uh, I think that's the best way to grow the channel and growth is what we're looking for. I really appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you, you guys' comments. I try to reply to all of them. Uh, I at least thumbs up all of them. And I really appreciate you guys watching. So thanks for watching.